Good morning from Oregon. I love this state. I am on the coast. It's raining and it's even wonderful in the mystical downpour of rain all over the green canopy of trees in the misty coast in the crashing waves. So how to not be scammed. It's been attempted many times on me in many countries. Okay, here's the signs. We'll jump right into it. Can I borrow your equipment? <laughs> this was in the United States, in Hawaii. The uh, fool was suggesting that I, that he borrow, he would like to get into photography and he could borrow my equipment. Duh. I had known him for a total of 20 seconds. Um, so in any country you go to, someone's going to suggest that. Um, and you'll never see it again, of course. The answer is no. Another thing they like to borrow, uh, this happened to me in India. Can I borrow some money until tomorrow? Only 3,000 US dollars and I'll pay you back because some problem occurred. Now these were people that were actual, I was hanging out with them, um, locals. The local religious brigade <laughs> of Hindus that I was hanging out with. He was the head priest. This priest uh, took out George Harrison's ashes into the Ganga River. Yeah, it was him. And wanted to know if he could borrow the money. Well, I actually considered it for about half a second because we had grown to be friends. And then I was like, what are you thinking? Are you crazy? The answer was no. So people were asked to borrow money and they can be friends of yours, but don't think just because they're a tourist or they're from your country or anything like that, that they're gonna be thinking of your best interests. Oh, here's another scam. This was in Nepal <laughs> during a massage. It was a guy and as he's massaging me, nothing bad or X-rated except for this comment, he goes, take me to your country and I can start a business there. It's like, I'm paying you to give me a massage, not to sponsor your passage to the United States. Can you believe this? That put a spin on the massage and I never asked a male to give me a massage. This was paid in Nepal again. I stuck with females. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, here's one. This was in India, um, and I did get scammed, but the second time they tried it, I didn't. They tell you, oh, there's no train tickets available. Well, there's a dedicated line for foreigners like us who aren't from India to either go to the, um, sometimes to go to a major train station and get a ticket, or there's a whole separate office. There's one in Calcutta, Delhi, I think Mumbai. So you go to this specific office and everybody speaks perfect English and there's like a tiny amount of rupees you pay to get a ticket there and you get to wait in air conditioned comfort instead of in the Howlett train station. I think it's Howlett in Calcutta with 10,000 other people. You can be sitting on some upholstery and relaxing until your ticket has been written up. So they'll, lo so they'll tell you that that they're a travel agency and there's no tickets so you have to hire a car <laughs> so I did that the first time and was out 150 bucks so you'll get approached like that and so my son was saying let's just go to the train station and see if there's tickets and he was right no I listened to this fool um and then, you know, these are a lot of times, like people say, oh, I was never approached. It's like, you were probably in a group of people or you were with a man. When I traveled with my son in India, I hardly never got approached by anyone. So it's more like if they see you as a vulnerable female. Boy, did they get that wrong. So all you gotta do is say no, walk away, don't engage. You don't have to be polite, just get out of there. As soon as you sense a weird feeling, trust it. Something is gonna go down that isn't gonna be in your favor. 
So this is what made me a real trailer traveler. It was the South America trip, my six months solo overland through six countries in South America, just taking the bus. I took a few uh, short flights when the bus would be like 25 hours. Not that I didn't do 25 hour bus rides, but I did find out how to deal with people. Okay, there's two things I can recommend and this really works. Surround yourself with a shield of protection and no one can get in that unless you invite them. Once I learned that, I was not as forthcoming to talk to everybody that came up to me. So if I allow people in that shield, it's my decision, not theirs. So that South America trip, I was acting like some kind of ambassador, like just talking to everybody. And then I thought, wait a minute, I'm inviting this in and I don't have to. So you can decide you're not going to let anybody in this shield unless you invite them. There's plenty of times where you want to talk to people and make friends and have a good time and everything. But make it your decision, not some shopkeeper or someone who wants to marry you to get out of their country that's been proposed. I mean, it's not flattering. It's just you're someone who can be the vehicle to get them out of their country like you're a taxi service, but it's going to cost you a lot more money. Um, so that's all I have for now. Have you ever been scammed? or attempted to be scanned in another country. Those are the first things that pop up after traveling in 35 countries around the world. So I'd love to hear your stories or if you have a question, let me know. And thank you everyone for your subscribes and your likes and your shares because it does help my channel and it helps it get found. So I'll see you in the next video.